In my mid-twenties, I became tired of working in call centres for minimum wage and decided I would go to college and university to explore my creative interests. During my masters, I got a job working for Channel 4 Viewer Inquiries, a minimum wage call centre job answering emails and phone calls from Channel 4 viewers. I was regularly emailing our Channel 4 contact to ask about opportunities to get, a, get, to get further. After two years, the only advice I could get was to apply for the Channel 4 trainee schemes. The trainee schemes ran by Channel 4 are laced with identity politics. After spelling out the specific groups of candidates that they favour, they require people to make public videos to talk about why your diversity is so important to you. One aspect that they list is gender, so we know that this means their application process favours women. This despite the fact that more women are going to university than men, and despite the fact that far more men are committing suicide than women. For the purpose of this video, I'd also point out that far more men are on the autism spectrum than women. They're doing the exact same thing this year, so you can watch hundreds of these videos online and see for yourself how young people are being encouraged to compete along the lines of identity politics in order to get a job. I find this completely unacceptable. There's an interesting Forbes article uh, that talks about terrible interview questions and it makes the point that you wouldn't ask a plumber or an electrician, what's your greatest weakness? Where do you see yourself in five years? Similarly, you wouldn't ask a plumber or an electrician, tell me, why is your diversity so important to you? It has absolutely nothing to do with your skill or knowledge in performing the job. With my application video, I acknowledged that I do have an interesting background, but I tried to make the wider point that diversity of thought is more important. I'll link my application video below. Here's a, an excerpt from the video. My readers don't know a thing about my background. The interesting thing about using a pseudonym is that you stand or fall on the strength of your ideas alone. My work has been with defending the video game community and wider geek community from almost constant attacks by a media that greatly misunderstands them. I point out the people with power that will often ignore the identities of individuals when those individuals are inconvenient to the narrative. I point to media failure for all to see. I listen to as many people as possible on a wide array of topics. Diversity, to me, means being able to listen to a teen in Singapore who has spent time in prison for being critical of religion. It means being able to listen to a controversial gay conservative, even when you disagree with 50% of what he has to say. I despise echo chambers. I want to listen to everyone. The greatest attribute that I have is diversity of thought. Despite my best attempts, knowing what I know about how prevalent identity politics is in media, I think the diversity team took one look at my application and concluded. You're fucking a white male! You're a white man! One thing I did mention but really underplayed in my application video was that I have dyspraxia and that I have had to overcome a lot of difficulties, including really severe social anxieties. Uh, here is a segment filmed by the Cedar Foundation. With the contract uh, I'm under in, in Concentrix, there's, uh, there's, there's quite a lot of information. Um, you, you, you kind of have, you have to be able to remember quite a lot and, and also be able to, uh, to, to find, uh, to, to know how to find the right information in, in kind of a timely manner. Going into work, I was f full of anxiety. Um, I just hated going in. Um, and I was just always worried about uh, messing up and making mistakes. Free Cedar, um, I've been able to, to uh, just, you know, have, have somebody that, to, to, to meet up with uh, regularly to talk about things with. Um, I'm able to get uh, some really good advice on so many different areas. They put me in, in, in contact with uh, a memory coach who, 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 who put in place, uh, you know, he, he was able to teach me kind of mind mapping techniques. My, my confidence is a lot better. Um, 
I'm, I'm much happier uh, going into work. I'm not, I'm not stressing out. I'm not. I'm not. You know, full of anxiety while while I'm in there. I went from having a lot of problems in the job at Fear Inquiries to really quite excelling, receiving high quality and productivity scores on a regular basis. I had worked out my own systems and regular quotes I would use to answer emails and phone calls effectively. The thing about a job like that though is that their standards are very high and no matter how good you are there's always fault to be found. There wasn't any way to progress in the job and I wasn't satisfied with allowing my degrees to go to waste. Despite checking off the diversity box, despite having two degrees, and despite having two years of experience with your inquiries, I couldn't even get a job interview from Channel 4. Psychologist Dr. Tanvir Ahmed wrote an article detailing the link between unemployment and male suicide, making the argument that gender quotas hurt men. Dr. Ahmed details a number of examples from men unable to get into a job because of gender quotas and men unable to move ahead in their jobs because of gender quotas. The article ends with this harsh conclusion. It is excessive to say feminism is causing male suicide, but it would be wrong to say it has nothing to do with it. As part of my job with your inquiries, we would take lots of complaints about Channel 4 News. From the terrible standard of their interviews to the explicit biases of the Channel 4 News team. Dancing in the aisles, cowboy hats in the air, and a paroxysm of Hillary hate speech. A war cry meant to terrorize their arch enemy. There's a great video analysis that shows how Channel 4 makes use of framing, graphics, dishonest language, and leading questions and the overall production to reinforce their anti-Corbyn bias. The straw that broke the camel's back for me was Channel 4 News pushing the completely unfounded accusation that Russia is responsible for hacking the Clinton campaign's emails. This segment titled New Evidence Links with Hackers in Russia is incredibly vague. The evidence hinges on the work of Threat Connect. What the segment does not clarify is that Fret Connect is run by the cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike. The Democratic National Convention paid for CrowdStrike to investigate the email leaks. Channel 4 News did not disclose the conflict of interest. And while this YouTube video only has 5,000 views, this segment would have been broadcasted to millions of homes around the UK. The International Institute for Strategic Studies says that CrowdStrike erroneously used IISS data as proof of the intrusion. IISS disavowed any connection to the CrowdStrike report. Hillary's email server was not secure. John Potesta, Hillary's campaign manager, at one point had his password as password. Julian Assange has also implied that the leaks have come from an insider. Channel 4 News also reported very little on the contents of the leaks and downplayed what they did cover. This segment even ends up taking a turn against Trump. Some examples of what they did not cover. CNN's Donna Brazil leaking debate questions to Hillary. The Clintons misappropriating funds and profiting off of the Haiti earthquake disaster money for weapons scandals involving Morocco and Qatar, responsibility for the destabilization of Syria and the resulting refugee crisis, and the DNC colluding with media outlets to rig the primaries against Bernie Sanders. From Brexit to Corbyn to the US election, I would often hear from viewers that Channel 4 News content was like propaganda. I would feed viewers the line that their comments would be passed to the Channel 4 News editorial team, but this did not seem like the truth to me. My job was starting to reflect Winston's at the Ministry of Truth, popping messages into a memory hole to be forgotten forever. I emailed our contact at Channel 4 to ask if I could write my own complaint, lay out what I saw as the problems with the coverage, and get a response by the Channel 4 News team. For this, I was suspended for two weeks and called in on two different investigatory meetings, one of which lasted over an hour and a half. 
I was accused of violating the trust between Concentrix and Channel 4. I was never asked any detail about what my issues were. Having recently moved into a flat, I was under pressure to keep my job. Cedar meant well and advised me to apologise, which I did in an email and in both meetings. In the second meeting, for over an hour and a half, I was grilled over and over with in the end questions just to see how many ways I could apologise, including when did you first realise it was wrong? It was not enough. I was told Channel 4 made the decision that I could not work on the Channel 4 contract anymore, and this one single incident was enough to put me on final written warning. In apologising for something I didn't even think was wrong in the first place, I had felt I had violated my own principles. Both Channel 4 and Concentrix treated me unfairly, and so I decided to leave Concentrix. Because I struggle socially, I have no connections in media, no one to help me find my footing in something I had worked so long and hard for. Over the months, I weighed the pros and cons of suicide, but time away from work helped to clear my head. Dan Brook is an executive member of the Channel 4 board and is the board champion for diversity. I wonder if it's his idea to require job applicants to prove their diversity in public videos. Here's Dan Brook lying to the public that television news is the most trusted source of news and accusing independent digital media of being fake news. The most regulated part of the media is television. Um, it is, and we've got this diverse public service system in the UK, um, and that is policed by Ofcom, and lo and behold, people's biggest source of news in the UK, at least, is television, and it's also the most trusted. Um, social media, I mean, at the moment, is much, much lower, both in terms of the amount, number of people that do access it for news, but also for its levels of trust. The, the problem Same is that you've got... Papers, by the way. Your problem is you've got, you've got this, this issue of fake news, and we have to stamp it out before it gets bigger. It's too late. It's not. It's not too late. But there's no such thing as fake news and not fake news, and it's clear to determine which is which. I mean, it's, it's well, such are, a big grey area between one and the other, and every single There, there may be, there. but... Stamping but, it out is censorship. But, aren't our lives not, micromanaged enough already? I mean, a, I mean, you have to regulate everything out of existence. We, uh, we have to bring up the elephant in the room here, in, in which is that what no-one wants to admit is that the idea of the fear of fake news is the fear of who is reading that fake news and what will they do with that information. And essentially when you say that there is a danger of people being influenced by fake news negatively, you're making a differentiation between you who can understand that the news is fake and kind of those vicos out there who can't. And that's a no, deeply, deep, hang on, that's a deeply insulting thing. A total and utter free-for-all ignores the fact that there are other aspects of existence that also have importance. We're not talking about micromanaging that out of existence. We're just talking about having, creating an environment where there's some basic <laughs> decency. Creating an environment means managing it. Awesome. One of the yeah, best but, things but, about but the original have that. incarnation of the we internet. We already have that in the, our media. Electronic Frontier Foundation, which saw it as a frontier for experimentation and people breaking but out. But we already and have that in the world of television what you and radio and sanitise it. Dan, 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 as a channel. As I said earlier, television is the main source of news for most people. Um, but the traditional media companies, Channel 4 included, the BBC included, have done an incredible job of going into the new world and distributing video based news. You know, Channel 4 News is now the biggest. British broadcaster putting news into, into Facebook. But I think you've done a deplorable job on, on telling the story of what's been going on in Western societies for the last 20, 30 years. That's why you didn't get that people were going to vote for Brexit. That's why the mainstream media didn't get that people were going to vote well, for Trump that's in the as way much they did, a thing about politics. Because you haven't covered the story. I, I think, think sorry, just to... It's impossible for viewers to even know if their comments are being read or listened to by Channel 4 News because it's impossible to get anyone from Channel 4 to respond. Nobody at Channel 4 ever has to take responsibility directly. Instead, they outsource their responsibility for minimum wage. They wear their biases on their sleeve and tell the viewer inquiries team to lie about their impartiality. I wish to work independently, having written multiple articles, and I want to further develop video content so keep an eye on this channel.